even though I'm a psychologist, I don't believe that psychotherapy in of itself is good enough to reach real freedom and real peace of mind. And there's a simple reason for that. In regular approaches to psychotherapy, we always take the human being as the starting assumption. We believe that we are this body-mind and we have to reach a better mental state. And of course, the way we go about this can vary tremendously. We can improve our life circumstances, our behavior, our internal cognitions, the way we relate to the world. There are really many different things we can change in the human being to create a better overall experience. But the problem with all of that is that we really take this human being too seriously. We think that this human being is what we really are. And we take that as our primary identity. Now, when we operate and we live from this limited identity of being a human being, then of course, the happiness we can reach, the freedom we can reach, is very, very limited. No matter how good our life circumstances get, and no matter how good we get at dealing with difficult emotions and life situations, there's always this core existential wound there at the heart of us. There will always be this belief that we are somehow separate from the world. We are somehow apart from life. And as long as we take ourselves to really fundamentally and essentially be a human being, we will never overcome this core existential wound. There will always be the sense that we're not quite here, we are always distant from our experience. There's always this ever so subtle wall between us and the world. And so what is the solution to that? Is there a different approach to real peace of mind that doesn't have this liability? Well, it's really quite simple. We have to take the correct starting assumption. We have to first recognize what we are, what we really are, and then go about the project of improving our life circumstances, fixing our relationships, and dealing with our emotions in a more wise way. But the important thing is always to check first what you essentially are. And there's an amazing discovery to be had there. What you essentially are is not a limited person, is not this separate self within a human body. What your essential being is, is not limited in any way. It doesn't have a shape, a color or a location. It doesn't even exist in space and time. What you essentially are is simply consciousness. And consciousness is all there is to your experience. Of course, we already intuitively know this. We all have the sense that we are aware of our experience. But we are usually fundamentally confused about what it is that is aware of our experience. We believe that it is the body, or furthermore, that it is a self within the body that is aware of experience. But we can come to recognize that what actually is there what actually is a way of experience is not a limited body, is not a separate self. It is just this wide open, awake presence. And this presence doesn't have a limit to it, doesn't have a center to it. It is always whole, always at peace. It's always just in this condition of perfection, we could say. It can't be improved upon, because there's nothing there to improve upon. And the huge advantage of being this is that we are not separate from life. We are life. Everything we experience, this whole field of sounds, of colors, of shapes, that is what we are. 
Because remember that everything you are aware of is just a shape that consciousness is taking. It is a shape that you are taking. And of course, when this is our starting position, when this is the recognition from which we live, then we don't have this core existential wound. We are not a thing that is separated from life itself. We are not this detached being in a body. We are that which simply is all of this. Or to be more exact, all of this is just a shape that our being is taking. Now this realization is not some kind of bypass. It doesn't mean that when we realize this, that the conventional experience of life as a human being stops or becomes meaningless. Of course it doesn't. There is still this experience of being embodied and living a human life. But now it is also so much more than that. It is an expression of something that is totally transcendental. And therefore we are not so serious about it anymore. Because we know no matter what happens here, it doesn't improve upon what we essentially are. And from this new operating system, we can then totally transform the way we go about life, the way we have relationships, the way we solve problems, just the way we encounter all our life circumstances. They can now be taken on board and engaged with, with a whole new different openness. Without this investment of thinking that what we are is essentially dependent on what happens to us. We now have this realization that what we are is unconditioned. And from this unconditioned reality, we live into this conventional world of humanity. And just by doing that, what we have taken to be this very ordinary human existence, all of a sudden has a completely different flavor to it. And all these neurotic tendencies that are present in the human being, they can be gradually transformed over time in the light of this realization. And this is why psychotherapy can be useful but it only becomes useful after this essential realization of what we really are because then we can take these more traditional approaches of psychology and use them to improve the conventional reality while having the realization that what we essentially are can't be improved upon so this might sound quite paradoxical but if you actually experience what I'm talking about, you will see that it is not. You will see that this conventional reality of being a human being and this absolute transcendence of what you really are are just not separated from each other. Even though they sound like two completely different worlds, they belong to each other, they add on to each other. And this is for me where psychology and spirituality meets. We can honor our conventional human life, but we do so with the knowledge of what we really are. And this is where the real peace is found.